everybody, this is Audrey, also known as Noble Strength, and welcome back to my channel. You are tuned in for Devotion Time, and I am so excited to be sharing this devotion with you. For one, I just felt like I got to share it with you now. You know how you get so excited about a message or something that was imparted to you, and you just want to share it with as many people as you can? Well, that's kind of how I'm feeling now. I was awakened at 5-something this morning, and I just had to get my book, which my little notebook, which I just keep in my nightstand by my bed and I got my pen and I just started jotting down what I felt God was imparting in my spirit. And I was just so excited about it. It was like, I had the idea to speak on this uh, prior to this, but it was like, he started downloading the information to me on how to approach it, how to bring it to you. Because <clears throat> sometimes we need parallels or you know analogies on relating spiritual things to the physical so we can get gain a better understanding and it was like he was showing me how to share this with you so that more people would benefit from it so i just give him all the glory and praise so as you can see by the title i'm speaking about dehydration and as always i want to lay a solid foundation first and I really want to talk about the physical aspects of dehydration. So we're just going to stick with some facts in the beginning on dehydration and what it is. And then we're going to make some parallels to the spiritual aspect of being dehydrated. So let's just start with, first of all, the fact every 10 pounds of your body weight, you need 15 ounces of water. This is, like I say, just a basics. If you're exercising and exerting yourself, you're going to need more. Another fact about water is 75% of the body's weight is made up of water. So what I'm impressing upon you is the importance, as we all know, of water. Now let's talk about dehydration and the definition of that. Dehydration is a deficit of total body water. So when your body is in a deficit, you're going to start experiencing some symptoms of dehydration. Not a good thing. Dehydration is very, very dangerous, especially dangerous for infants, uh, young children, and elderly people. And I want you to keep in mind that it's especially dangerous for infants because I'm going to parallel that to the spiritual as well. So without enough water, your body can't function properly. Dehydration is life-threatening, meaning um, if you go too long without it, you can die. You will die. So what are some causes of dehydration? Well, we know just basic exertion, sweating is, you know, can cause us to de dehydrate. So we're losing water. Remember, it's a deficit of water. So we're losing water when we're exerting ourselves and we're sweating. And just everyday activity, we're losing water through our urine, through, um, so many different just everyday functions so it's just a common thing so we have to constantly be replacing what we lose <clears throat> now what are some symptoms of dehydration dry mouth no tears no sweating muscle cramps uh, nausea vomiting heart palpitations lightheadedness weakness and decreased urine those are just some of the outward physical symptoms of dehydration now, how can dehydration be treated? Well, you know, you've heard the medical saying that preventative medicine is the best medicine. That's what I found <clears throat> in my research is that the first thing you need to do is to try to prevent dehydration. So in taking your water, preventative is the best. Fluid replacement throughout the day, constantly drinking your water. But okay, so we talked about what dehydration is, the meaning of it, what causes dehydration, some of the symptoms, and preventative methods for dehydration, intaking water, and doing everything you can to prevent being dehydrated. So now, we got all that laid out, so where am I going with this on a spiritual level? Well, I wanna take you to a scripture, and this scripture is in Matthew 12, 43. Matthew 12, 43. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless, dry, arid places, seeking rest, but finds none. That is key. Unclean spirits, okay, seek dry places. Now, 
Why do they like dry environments? Why do they love? They love dry places because not much can prosper in a dry place. Just imagine you're in a desert. You don't see a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, vegetation or growth in a desert. You see dry land cracks and crevices, but not a lot of greenery, not a lot of growth. So unclean spirits, and demons, whatever you want to call them, they like dry places because it's a good ground for them because there's no other growth taking place there. So that's just a perfect place for them to dwell. And the reason why I'm focusing on this scripture is because I think so many of us neglect our spiritual selves and we become dehydrated spiritually. We're not intaking the spiritual water that we need to live and we know how important physical water is you if you don't uh, have it consistently enough on a daily basis you can die so from a spiritual aspect we know that they like dry arid places so that means they don't like places that are filled with water. Now, what water are we talking about spiritually? We're talking about the living waters. Let's look at some scriptures that talk about living water. In John 3, 5, it says, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's speaking of baptism. So now we talk about there's this physical being immersed in water, being uh, risen again. That's showing your old self being buried and the new man uh, being brought, uh, arisen with Christ. Let's go to another chapter. John 4, 10. I believe this is John 4, 10. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And she said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get living water? Good question. Let's take a look at John 4, 13. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, meaning physical water. That's why we're constantly having to intake it. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. So I love the uh, analogy that God gave her from a physical standpoint, that the water that he gives will be like a well. And she was just saying how you don't have anything to draw from and the well is deep. So he said that he will create within us a well of living waters that will come forth. And so remember unclean spirits like dry places, places where Christ does not dwell, place where God's word is not embodied in that vessel, in that being. We have a lot of the walking dead in our world, they're dry, they're decaying, that, you know, anything without Christ is dead. So what I'm imparting to you is if you are a Christian, you can have God's water, but you can be at a deficit. Why not, you know, continually on a daily basis, take in the, the very source and element that you know is needed for life as as you know much as you do physical water so every time you're taking in physical water be taking in you know god thinking of god meditating on his word reading his bible praying how much are you you know allowing god to fill you you know what i mean so you can have you know christ in you you may have accepted jesus as your savior but are you intaking on a daily basis so that you're not dry and susceptible to the, you know, ploys of the enemy? Because like I said, a dry place has cracks and crevices and the enemy is just looking for the perfect little crack to come into to cause havoc and wreak havoc in your life. 
and we can seal up those cracks and moisturize those cracks with you know living water with christ with his word so i just impart upon you to ask yourself are you spiritually dehydrated are you in a dry place right now don't turn away from the one who is going to keep your body filled with the water that it needs to live. One of the things that I almost forgot and left out that I really wanted to impress upon you, and I mentioned it earlier, to keep in mind that, you know, dehydration can be especially dangerous for infants. And the reason why I said that, because if you're a new person in Christ, or as they say, a babe in Christ, you've just recently accepted Jesus in your, as your savior, it's really, really important important for you to stay in the word to surround yourself with people who are like-minded to um, pray continuously because you you're new and you're more susceptible to you know the infiltration of the enemy who likes dry places so it's really important that you be mindful and conscientious of the how you're using your time and how you're exerting yourself on a spiritual level. So like I say, it's very, very important because the enemy loves a dry vessel. So keep your body filled with the living waters with Jesus Christ and you're going to be just fine. And I also wanted to uh, end with this scripture because I like completely left this out. Uh, Revelations 22:17. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without costs. Now, we know there's bottled water in the stores and you have to pay for that. But the water that I'm talking about that will keep you from being spiritually dehydrated does not cost a thing. And that is Jesus Christ. And what, is that, what does he want us to do? He wants us to just come to him. So come to Jesus. If you're feeling dry, go to Jesus. I promise you, you won't regret it. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate you so much. I want to impart on unto you all of my viewers that Jesus loves you and just be a good steward of all that he's given you because he loves us so much let's end in prayer dear Heavenly Father thank you so much for your word and Lord many of us oftentimes are dehydrated spiritually and Lord we know that the source of the living water is Jesus Christ Father, impart upon us that motivation to get into your word, to meditate on your word, to seek after you, Father God, so that we will not become susceptible to unclean spirits who are roaming around seeking a place to live. And God, I just thank you for this message and I pray and ask blessings on every viewer, Lord God, that has tuned in. I pray that something got into their spirit, Lord, all for your glory. I pray and ask, Father, that you will encourage them through this message to keep going, to not give up, to seek after you daily. And we just ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next time. Bye. And I'll see you next time. Bye.